Hi, I'm Amy, and I'm a presenter at the Ontario Science Centre. Welcome to my home. Today, we are going to be creating a model of an oil spill on the ocean. Together, we will be modeling work that is done by oceanographers, engineers, marine and terrestrial biologists, and many other people to find a solution to this environmental disaster. The ocean is a big part of our hydrosphere, the water component of our planet, which provides us with ecosystem services. These are jobs that the environment does naturally for us. The ocean is really important to the water cycle, provides us with food, is a habitat for whales, kelp, and sea otters, and influences the climate, and is a great place to swim. But how did we get to a place where we're spilling oil in the ocean? One significant event was the Industrial Revolution. It created a paradigm shift from our planet having a focus on agriculture to a focus on growth and development. The world began using new sources of energy such as steam, and eventually the energy-rich resource oil. A new paradigm shift is upon us as we have come to realize there's a limit to the planet's resources. There are many voices of influence when we discuss the use of oil. We know that burning it is causing climate change, and yet our gasoline-powered cars are an important part of our lives, just like the industry used to create products we rely on. We know that as we transport oil in its many forms, that it can spill from the pipelines, from trucks, and from tankers. Here's John, who will introduce us to our oil spill challenge. Let's model what happens during an oil spill. So here we have a tanker, and it's sailing through our model ocean. Now this tanker is going to represent our source of contamination. Now this would be similar to how in the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, the source of contamination was an oil drilling rig that had an explosion which caused 4 million barrels of oil to be dumped into the Gulf of Mexico. The transport of oil from the source of production to where it's going to get consumed is what poses the greatest risk for an accidental oil spill. Now we should also note here that oil spills don't always happen in the ocean. Pipelines, for example, which can be used to bring oil from, let's say, Alberta's oil sands to the coast, have the potential to leak up oil into the environment. Now, this actually happened in 2019, where an oil pipeline in northern Alberta accidentally leaked over 40,000 liters of oil emulsions into the North Saskatchewan River near Edmonton. After the oil spill, we saw the oil floating on top of the surface of water. Now, as you might know, oil and water don't mix. Oil is less dense than water, meaning it will float on top. Now, the molecules of oil are also what we call hydrophobic. Now, that literally means they're water-hating, or they have a fear of water. As you can see, the oil and water aren't really mixing. Now, in an oil spill, we would call this an oil slick, considering that most of the oil stays nice and slick on top of the water. So here's your challenge. Imagine an oil tanker spilled much of its contents while sailing off the coast of Canada. And we're enlisting your help to figure out what's the best way to both contain and clean up the oil spill. Now, we're going to do some basic testing and create a model of what it's going to look like. So here I have a model ocean. It's just a big dish pan. Uh, and I filled it with about a liter and a half of water to fill it up. The next part is I'm going to measure out some oil. So in this case, I'm just using some cooking oil and I'm going to measure in my trusty measuring cup about 100 mils. That's the amount I'm going to put into the environment. Now keep that value recorded because at the end we're going to measure how much oil we're going to take out of the ocean. Ergo, how well did we clean up? So we're just going to add some oil to our ocean and we're going to notice that it creates a really nice oil slick. Now it's your job to figure out a way to get that oil out. Now this is going to involve some critical thinking and analytical skills and consider doing a little bit of research to figure out some methods that people use in real life to clean up oil spills. Now check for a list to see uh, what are some possible materials that you might use. Try pausing the video here to see if you're able to do this experiment on your own. So hopefully by now you've had a chance to try to experiment to clean up the oil spill. Were you able to recover any oil? Did you create a new apparatus? Did some materials work better than others? 
or did the oil just disperse into the ecosystem? In reality, there are actually many different solutions to try to clean up an oil spill. All have varying degrees of, of success, some work better than others, it really depends on the situation. In certain scenarios with certain conditions, I might use one method, while in a different oil spill, I might use another. There is no one solution that works every time, and different conditions might favor one method over the other. For example, we can set up physical barriers called booms to keep the oil from spreading and then run skimmers across the oil slick. Now for a small oil spill, this might be all we need, but physically removing oil is a lot harder if the oil spill is very large, and if there are waves and winds to contest with, it can be really rough. These abiotic factors might even move the oil closer to the shore, which is definitely not what we want. Now in other cases, we might use in situ burning, which is literally burning the oil off the surface of the water. Now, while this removes a lot of oil quickly, it leaves behind residue that sinks to the ocean floor and can affect uh, benthos, which are organisms like clams or mussels that live near the ocean floor. Will oil be a part of our future? Great question, but not one we can answer today. Today, we can try to think of ways to reduce our own oil use and think of all the people who are affected by oil production. Scientists conduct environmental impact assessments to anticipate environmental issues arising from new projects. Be like a scientist and think of the big picture. You might just come up with the next great invention.